Stuff. We all have it. If you like old comics, then you probably have a lot of it. And not just comics, either. Our particular hobby has inspired books, movies, television, and radio shows, as well as providing fodder for posters, t-shirts, statues, games, and most critical for this video, toys. And while it's fine to keep them in the package, or open them up and stick them up on a shelf, there's so much more that your toys can be doing for you. Personally, I like to photograph them. Being able to take characters I've followed my entire life and put them into situations of my own making is a pleasure second only to actually writing a comic about them. Within my lens, worlds may collide, a realm where otherwise impossible situations can play out as I see fit. Photographing your action figures can provide an entirely new dimension to your collecting experience, as well as becoming a fun and immersive hobby unto itself. So how do you do it? Well, let's start with the basics. First, you're gonna need a camera. For the beginner, I'd recommend digital over film for multiple reasons. Today's digital cameras come with built-in presets that make starting out a breeze. The images these cameras produce are instantly accessible, easy to edit and upload. With just a little practice and patience, a beginner can get notable results. Next up, you'll need to learn how to light your photographs. As this video is more about the toys and less about the technique, allow me to direct you to a helpful tutorial to get you started on the right foot. Back already? That was quick. Okay, when first starting out, your best bet for indoor photography is to use a nice plain or neutral background. The key to step one is to simply get your stuff in focus, and an uncluttered background will help you get there. Most folk use simple poster board in the beginning. A decently sized sheet can be found at your local drug or craft store for less than two bucks. To achieve a seamless look to your background, simply bow the paper in the middle, taping the top of the sheet to the wall, and the bottom to your table. White paper may prove to be too hot and contrasty for the photos you're looking for. Fortunately, poster paper can be found in many colors, so you can build a nice set of backgrounds quickly and inexpensively. Colored poster board can be lit dramatically. With a little bit of creativity and practice, the beginner can create some truly eye-catching images. These images can be enhanced by adding simple objects to the photo like houseplants, train set parts, or even other toys. Unlike play sets or scratch-built dioramas, poster board can be broken down and stored quickly with multiple sheets able to fit in a simple cardboard tube. Using poster board as a background is quick, efficient, and can provide some truly impressive results. When it comes to photographing your toys, Mother Nature can be your best friend. What seems insignificant to the naked eye can spring to otherworldly life through the camera lens. With the right toy and a close enough crop, you can turn your backyard into a battlefield or your kid's sandbox into the planet Tatooine. Naturally occurring conditions like rain, snow, or drought can add a heretofore undiscovered dimension to your pictures. Take advantage of the world around you. In all of my years of photographing toys, I can attest that nothing is better than natural light. It will give you the truest, most immersive images by far. But Mink, you say? I live in the city, and there's nothing like that around. Untrue. Urban environments can provide fantastic opportunities for action figure photography. Parks, older libraries or government buildings, even public spaces with fountains or topiary can provide the perfect background for your action figure. A crumbling wall becomes 100 feet tall if you shoot it just right. That's the magic of toy photography. Taking something as obviously fake as a plastic person, but making them appear in situations where they look real. Even after all of that, some of you are steadfast and not leaving the house, and that's okay, because you can create realistic worlds inside of your home. With a bit of creativity and a lot of hard work, you can approximate the outside world by constructing a diorama. 
A diorama can be made of anything, and most hobbyists work with readily available materials and gear. Basic tools are a utility blade for long, deep cuts, and an exacto blade for detailed precision work. A ruler is essential for measuring dimensions, while a T-square ensures clean, straight cuts. A variable temperature hot glue gun is important for getting all the bits to stick. And let's not forget pencils for marking our work out, ballpoint pens for rendering, and a variety of brushes and acrylic paints. Your materials will vary depending on what you're going for. Cardboard, paper mache, and wire mesh can all be used to great effect, but these days many dio builders prefer to use extruded polystyrene insulation foam poured, or his sister, Craft Store Foam Core. I've recently fallen under foam spell, and I can't recommend it highly enough. It's inexpensive, easy to work with, and is surprisingly versatile. From medieval mountain terrains to sleek starships, if you can imagine it, you can probably build it with foam. Not all that handy with your hands? Then welcome to the world of digital compositing. In a nutshell, you're taking your picture against a blank background, then replacing that background with another scene via Photoshop or some other digital editing software. I find this works best in conjunction with real-world elements, but they're not essential. Photo compositing can be a complex process, or made easy by using an online service like PicMonkey. And while overuse can lead to a sameness to an artist's photos, photo compositing remains a valuable tool when it comes to taking cool pictures of your toys. I've been taking photos of my action figures since I was a kid, but I didn't actually take it seriously until 2010, when my brother Dennis Miller graciously provided me with my first digital camera. I produced a series of comedy strips for thefoosh.com, featuring retired crime fighter Bruce Wayne and his hard-drinking ways, as well as numerous toy reviews where many of these images originated. And while I have less time to pursue the hobby now that I run old guys who like old comics and produce these here videos, it's still a lot of fun to pull out the old camera and snap some pics of my latest toys. I hope this video inspires you to do the same. For the old guys who like old comics network, this is Jason Mink. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting us at the link below. Thank you.